All right, now, I don't think y'all need any more reminders of just how that game against the Dolphins last year went. Because uh, it was ugly. It was rough um, from start to finish. Even though Ravens, they started off, it was like, okay, they moving the ball. Even though they settled for a field goal early on, but they were moving the ball. But then it just it stopped, and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, as you all already remember. But Lamar Jackson, he, um, he didn't forget what happened last year in Miami. Um, and his presser. Some of the stuff that he said in yesterday's press, it really stuck out to me. Um, and, and it really let me know that, of course, like, you're going to try to win every single game. But to me, it just seemed like this game is a little bit different. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So you too, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we know that we didn't forget what happened last year in Miami. We know Lamar didn't forget what happened last year in Miami. And certainly the media and all the analysts, they didn't forget what happened last year in Miami. Uh, and it was rough. It, it, it was rough. It started off like, hey, maybe the Ravens, they, they gonna do the they gonna do the thing, man. They gonna make this happen. But then as every quarter went on. Uh, it just got uglier and uglier and uglier. And that was the game to where, as fans of the NFL, if you didn't know what a zero blitz was, <laughs> if you ain't know what it was, that was the game where you learned about it. Because that was the talk of the town for, like, the rest of the season almost. It was like, hey, all right, Dolphins showed the blueprint how to beat those Baltimore Ravens. Dolphins showed the blueprint how to stop Lamar Jackson. Hey, Cover zero blitz, that's how you do it. Even though, a lot of times, they didn't even do the cover zero blitz. They showed it, but they didn't strike all the time. They would show it, and they would disguise it in different ways and whatnot, and have some guys going in, some guys staying back. They just did an excellent job on defense that day. But somebody else who does an excellent job uh, are the Team Keep It Clean patrons and the Team Keep It Clean channel members. I got to give a special shout-out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members, Heather uh, who is also a Team Keep It Clean patron. So we appreciate you double. Uh, and then Kevin. So shout out to the both of y'all. Appreciate the both of y'all. Thank you to the both of y'all. Much love to the both of y'all. Now, um, somebody who also deserves a lot of love, uh, a special shout out to her. Shout out to Rita. Because Rita in the presser yesterday, uh, Rita, she asked the first question. And it was a really good question because it's a question that hopefully is the start of something long term with the Baltimore Ravens. She asked if Lamar Jackson was comfortable going under center, uh, since that's something that we hadn't really seen. And that's true. Like, we had heard Greg Roman talk about it in years past. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to have Lamar Jackson operating under center a lot more this year. But then it didn't happen. Um, and then I know last year people were like, well, hey, the offensive line, they weren't in good shape. They were in shambles. They were hurt. So if you have Lamar under center, then he's going to be on his back in less than two seconds every play because the offensive line, they're not going to be able to pass protect. And they're not even going to be able to run block if they were that bad. So, okay, all right, I understand it. But, okay, I, I, I'll give it a little pass. Not a, not a big pass, but a little pass. But anyway, we're here now. And in the game against the Jets, he was under center. <laughs> like he, he may have taken more snaps under center in that game against the Jets than he did the past, like, two, three years. But anyway, I am over-exaggerating a little bit, or, or am I? But anyway, um, she asked if he was comfortable going under center since, again, that's something that we hadn't really seen like that. And Lamar said they've been working on it since camp, and he said coach wanted to do things a little bit different this year and that he is certainly comfortable with it. So then it got to the sort of the, the, the cringy part. Um, it's like when, if, if you're a parent, if you're a parent and you tell your kids, hey, don't do this, a lot of times the kids will ask, why? Why? Why, 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 why not? Why can't I do that? And it's up to you as a parent to explain to them why, the reason. Because it's, it's one thing, if you tell your kid, all right, you can't do this, but you don't give them a why, it's like they're going to be thinking why and they're not going to fully understand. But if you explain it to them and allow them to understand, then it'll make it make that much more sense to them. But this is the part of the presser where it seemed like there were kids that were asking their parents why, even though the why had already been given. 
because somebody asked, they asked him about the contract, and he said that he was done talking about it and that he was focused on the Dolphins. Now, now Lamar has already talked about it, and he gave the reason. He said, hey, we're going to be negotiating. Cool. Hopefully we get this thing done before week one. Cool. But if it's not done by week one, then I'm, I'm cool. I'm going to play and everything, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So he gave the why. He gave the reasoning. He gave all that before. But somebody decided they still wanted to ask after. So um, they asked him about the contract, and he said he was done talking about it. He's focusing on the Dolphins now. Then somebody else, they asked if the guaranteed money was so important to him. And before he answered, he took a little sip of his smoothie. And when I saw that, I said, oh, okay, yeah. He's trying to hold himself back from saying something that he might regret later. Because I'm sure he was very annoyed. Like, again, he's already expressed, I'm not talking about the contract. I ain't talking about the contract, I'm talking about the Dolphins. And somebody still asked anyway. And then after that, a third person, they, this is what they, they even apologized first. They said, I'm sorry. But then still asked the question about the contract. And, and I'm just like, oh my goodness. Like, I, I don't know, man. Anyway, um, now for the part about the Dolphins. Uh, somebody asked, when you look at the game film from last year, why do you think they were as effective as they were? And, and they also asked Lamar Jackson if he expects to see a lot of the same stuff that the Dolphins did last year. Um, and he said the Dolphins, they really caught them off guard last year. And he said that they really haven't went over defenses going all out zero against him. Now, when he said that, I wasn't sure if he was talking about if they hadn't went over that last year or if they hadn't went over that this year. Um, so, cause again, I would think last year, like you got the person who have, you, you had the person who invented cover zero, uh, as a defensive coordinator, that being Wink, he invented cover zero that he is the creator, the founder, the manufacturer, all of that stuff of cover zero. Even, I, I mean the, the word blitz, if you look up the word blitz in the dictionary, it originated from Wink Martindale. So I, I would have thought that last year they would have definitely, uh, had some practice, a lot of practice. Uh, against that so again i don't know if he's talking about last year or maybe he was talking about this year i'm not sure um but he also said that he feels that they'll have an answer for it this year he said he said that they watch film and then right after that he said that they've watched a lot of film so he reiterated it right away that they've been watching these miami dolphins um and he said they don't want it to happen again Ooh, yeah <laughs> i don't think we want it to happen again either because that was yikes that was a big yikes um, because they just, they manhandled the Ravens last year. They, they bullied them. They just, they, they, they tore them apart. Um, then Jeff, shout out to Jeff Zrivik. Uh, he asked uh, if that game changed the way other teams played them, because people talked about that being a blueprint to facing the Ravens. And he said, Lamar said that other teams did do the zero, uh, the zero blitzing and whatnot, but it was just the way that the Dolphins did it. He said they'll have an answer this time around. You know, like, if you, if you tried something, say, for instance, and I'll just use food because I, I love food. I'm a connoisseur of, of food. If you tried this recipe and you're like, mm, I know this recipe is, it is going to be fire. It's going to be so good. I, I, I'm going to love it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this and I'm going to love it. My family's going to love it. My friend's going to love it. I got it. So you made the recipe and it ended up just being all right. Then you let somebody, somebody taste it, and they were like, mm, this, that's it? That's uh, okay. This was your special recipe? This is really not all that. And you're like, man, I failed. I failed. You can either live with that failure or be like, you know what? If I get an opportunity to make this for them again, then I'm going to run it back, and, and I'm going to do it the right way. I'm, I'm going to correct everything that I did wrong. I'm going to look to see. Try to examine everything that I, I messed up on. Maybe some ingredients that I could have added a little more. Maybe some ingredients I could have added a little less. Or taken away a little less, not added a little less. But you get what I'm saying. You try to rectify the situation, and that's exactly what it seems like Lamar Jackson is doing uh, this time. He's going to try to do uh, against the Miami Dolphins. It, it, I'm not, it, I don't know, man. It just, to me, when I heard him speak, it didn't just sound like he was talking about any other game. Now, somebody did ask him, oh, when, when you, even though he's not playing at home, the home that they were talking about, because one reporter was asked, like, hey, when you play at home against the Dolphins, he said, you played against them, I think, in preseason of your rookie year, and then um, you played against them uh, uh, last year, too. I think he forgot about the 2019 game. I don't know. But anyway, 
He was like, do, do you get extra like excited or amped up when you when you play against the Dolphins at home or when you play at home? And he was like, no, I get I get excited for every game. I get hyped up for every game. Um, but I was thinking like, uh, this game is at M and T Bank Stadium. It's not at his home. But I mean, it's a home game for the Ravens. But anyway, I that that just is something that 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 was on my mind when he said that. Uh, <laughs> He uh Jeff Jeff Zrebit shout out to shout out to Jeff man Jeff said uh what are the keys to punishing a team that wants to blitz you a lot uh, and Lamar said by going at their weaknesses uh, how they came at ours last year he said that they don't really know how the Dolphins are gonna play them because uh, they could show one thing on film and then end up doing another and that's true you don't know what they're gonna do you you don't know how they're gonna come out um and and this is it's, it's a chess match man. It really is. I know that little corny saying, oh, this is a chess match between these two teams. It really is. Because these teams are trying to figure out each other's moves. So the game is going to really tell the answers to that question. Um, so then they moved on from that. And um, he was asked about uh, a question that has been on a lot of people's minds. Um, and a question that when we did the episode of Question from Subscribers the other day, I just I didn't know who the issue stemmed from. Whether it was Lamar, whether it was Greg Roman. Whether, I, I did not know. Uh, a lot of people in the, in the comment section, <laughs> y'all always got a lot of good stuff to say. Uh, and it was very creative stuff, too, and fun stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, he was asked about the offense rushing to the line with the play clock winding down. Uh, and he said that they do have some long play calls. Uh, said they have to do it a little faster sometimes. And then he joked about uh, the play clock um, being a little bit low. But then he said that this week they will be better. And as the season goes on, they will continue uh, to get better at that. And that's important. That that's important um, because you you want to have time to examine uh, the defense because say for instance like you you get into the the line of scrimmage you, you getting up there to the line and it's like two seconds left I mean unless you like somebody crazy something you could scan a defense in two seconds and know okay more power to you but I would think that you would want to have as as much time as you possibly could especially because Ravens they do a lot of motion with people and whatnot so I don't know man. Even though my guy, my guy JT, he did bring up a good point that because uh, he showed me how uh, two uh, the the Bengals and the Rams um, last year they were those two teams were in the top three or top four spots for teams that got the most delay of game penalties last season. So I mean it, it obviously worked. They, they, I mean they made it to the Super Bowl, but um, I just like with the Ravens, it just it just seems like a lot of rushing. And then if, if you rush stuff, a lot of times it doesn't come out as neat as, and successful as if you would have taken your time. But we'll see how they, uh, they move about that going forward. Um, he was also asked about Isaiah Likely's first game being a little rough. Uh, and he said that it was just his first game and that it was nothing. He said he still got 16 games left, which they do. There's a lot of games. Uh, he said Likely is still a star in his eyes and he'll prove it. So shout out to Isaiah Likely, man. Uh, and then, shout out to Rita again. Uh, she asked if the slow starts could have been attributed to them not playing in the preseason and them just having to knock that rust off. And he said, yeah, he thinks so a little bit. He said he felt a little stiff uh, early on in the game. And that's, I ain't say exactly that he was stiff, but I said that he just did not seem as energetic as he normally is. He wasn't as loose as he normally is. He just, he did not seem himself early on. But it wasn't until really for me when I really saw him like really get loose was uh, after the Rashad Bateman touchdown. That's when I really saw him like really like okay I was like okay that there he goes there he is. Um, but anyway, uh, he said uh, with it being his first game action in nine months, um, he said a couple of them said the same thing as far as them having to really knock that rust off. But let's hope that against these Miami Dolphins, that not only is the the rust knocked off. Uh, but so are those fish. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Well, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Well, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.